Hey guys, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to do this. Pretty cool, right? Let's see how it's done. I'm using Mixamo's Magic Pack for the animation and the Unity Particle Pack for the particle effect. Both are free and available in the Asset Store. So let's get started. The first thing is uh, after you created a character, in this case I'm ha I have a third person basic here doesn't shoot, doesn't have a melee. I just want to trigger a animation. And the easiest way to do that is to use the generic animation. It's a very simple script that will play an animation uh, using a input. So let's add a animation to our animator controller. I'm going to use the submachine state actions for that. So let's find our animation here. So let's select our animation here and call it magic attack. Now uh, on previous versions of the template every time we create a action uh, we use the tag custom action here but now we change that and we no longer use the tag here we have now a vAnimator tag which allow us to create um, multiple tags if you need it for a single clip is very useful plus this uh, verification is a little bit faster than this one so from now on let's use the vAnimator tag the reason why we need to add a vAnimator tag to some animation states is that we need to let our scripts know that a specific animation is being played in order to have the controller to behave correctly for example, the custom action tag will lock the controller movement and move based on the position and rotation of the animation's root motion. We also use tags like lock movement, is reloading, is a keeping, attack and others so that the system can know how to behave correctly for that specific animation. You can create your own tags and create unique conditions like if I'm playing a certain animation, my character will not rotate or something like that. That's just an example. Uh, that's a good way to have more control of your controller. Cool, we have here our magic attack. Let's create a exit transition. Uh, so at the end of our animation, it can go back to the base layer and entry again the locomotion. So we can walk around again. Now let's copy the name of our animator state and paste here on the animation clip that we want to play. I'm using here the keyboard um, L to trigger this animation, so let's see if it works. I'm going to press L and the animation plays. Great, our animation is playing correctly, but now how can we trigger a particle when this animation playing and specifically how can we know the timing so that's the magic of our animator event in here we can add a event and let's call it play fire uh, effect as you can see we have a bar here that goes from 0 to 1 because every animation plays from 0 to 1 if you play if you if you play our animation here, as you can see, it has approximately 3 seconds, but it goes from 0 to 100, or 0 to 1. And I want to trigger my fire effect at about 0.3. So let's select here, 0.3, and add another event to stop fire effect. And I want to stop at about 0.8. 0.8 here and as you can see in the warning it says make sure to use a lower value than the exit time of this state so we're using a exit time here of 0.9 so if it's 0.9 and I'm using 0.8 it's fine now who is listening to this event we're going to the third person and add the V animator event receiver to receive the event from the animator. Now to use a animator event receiver 
we must have a animator controller in order to search in the animation states for an animation event. Now, you not necessarily need a animator event receiver and the animator controller on the same object. For example, um, I can add a animator event receiver on a weapon that will instantiate at runtime on my controller and check the get animator in parent. Once I instantiate it, I will have access to my uh, parent animator controller and I will be able to find a event to trigger some cool events. That's pretty useful. Now here we're going to create two events, one by the name of play fire effect and the other stop fire effect. Now we can uh, simply drag and drop the fire particle. So let's take a look here. Um, effect examples. Here I have a flame thrower. Let's select here. Drag and drop inside my character. Reset my position and rotation. Let's see it. It play here. Pretty cool. Now uh, we don't want this to play on a wake, so let's uncheck that. And well, that's it for now. Go to our controller again, create a trigger event for each uh, event, drag and drop our particle here. Now let's go to our particle system and call the play method and here the stop method. Cool, now let's test it. Oh, very nice. It plays and stops at the exact um, timing that we set on the animator event. Now, to make things more interesting, let's apply damage using that particle to an enemy. Uh, first thing is that my particle is not colliding with the enemy, so it will look much more cooler if I enable a uh, collision with the layer enemy. As you can see here, I set the layer enemy and it now collides with my, my enemy. Looks really cool, right? Now, in order to apply damage to hand, I need to check this option right here, send collision message. On this updated, we have a new version of the object's damage which now supports, uh, as you can see, on particle collision. If I check this and set the tag of my character enemy here, I can add a damage about five. And in here I can add a damage type, which we also uh, updated with a event that we're, we're going to use. So the damage type works with the hit damage particle and trigger specific effects. So let's create a custom uh, damage particle called fire. And on my enemy, I can simply drag and drop a particle to him. I place it under the spine so that if he moves or something, uh, the fire will follow uh, the root bond. So in here, I just uncheck the play on awake and uncheck looping and have a small duration. So if I add a hit part damage particle to my enemy, I can create a custom damage effect. So let's create one. The name is fire and I can drag and drop a effect prefab here and attach to the receiver and rotate to the direction it hits. Or I can also trigger uh, directly from here using the on trigger effect which is what I'm going to do since I've already placed my fire here on my the spine I can simply go in here and call the play uh, method now let's test it now if I press L it takes the damage and it plays the fire animation that we've placed it inside the spine. I've also added a few 
fireballs in my hands and enabled uh, in the same way I've enabled the main fireball. Very cool, right? Now the animator event is not tied with the character controller. You can use it on any object and any animation. This allows you uh, to create very unique uh, behaviors and interesting uh, game design choices. That's it for this video. Hope you guys like it. This update will be available soon on the Asset Store and the V Store. See you guys on the next one.